My name is Loretta Barrett Bowden. Uh, I'm a woman of the Citizen Pottawatomie Nation. We're a reservation over around Shawnee, about 60 miles southeast of here. Used to be a long drive, and now it's only about 45 minutes. Um, I'm a chef, um, a late in life blooming chef. I uh, had restaurants in Santa Fe, New Mexico, called the Corn Dance Cafes, that I opened with my eldest son, Clay, and uh, then hearkened back to Oklahoma City when my grandkids started sprouting up and I thought, okay, Granny needs to go home now. <laughs> so that led to um, some years of travel in between, uh, exploring. I shot a PBS series, uh, which won an Emmy for a little mini series that, that we did uh, with Connecticut Public TV. So back home, uh, waiting for our, my, my museum to open after some Ah, gosh, I guess I've been working with the First Americans Museum Project since the early 2007, 8, 9, 10 or so, a lot of years. So it gave me time to move away, come back, and uh, now we're open. So I am the consulting chef for the 39 restaurant at uh, the First Americans Museum. We pay homage to the 39 tribes uh, that now call Oklahoma home. Uh, so, in ingredient base, uh, these peoples came from literally all over North America to this one parcel of land in what I call the belly button of North America, <laughs> or the melting pot of, of North Americans. We have so many tribes reservation here. So, but that gave such a vast. Um, uh, number of ingredients that I can pull from. You know, not that I have to focus on the Oklahoma State dish of chicken fried steak and cream and gravy. I can pull from all of these tribes' original homelands and bring them here to the fore to tell the story of our people, our culture, through their original foods. One of the PBS series uh, with um, the Yurok tribe, uh, right on the border of Northern California, Oregon, on the Klamath River stunningly gorgeous, gorgeous um, part of the country and going up the river, you know, the rivers were our, were our freeways um, uh, in the early days, the trade routes and the fishing, but when, you know, these are subsistence fishermen and fisher people, you know, depended upon the, the salmon runs and to see how the use of chemicals and uh, all of the other contaminants that civilization has brought to the fore. When the fish can't get up the rivers uh, to spawn, when the oxygen in the rivers is so choked out uh, by, the, by the runoff of the fertilizer that's causing big algae growths, so that there's no oxygen in the water uh, for the fish to make it to their spawning grounds. Hence my, my attraction to this piece. Corn and Monsanto. Oklahoma, though Neil is from a totally different part of the country, uh, the same thing has happened to us here in Oklahoma. I grew up in a time uh, where there were not just genetically modified cornfields around, but there were farmers everywhere growing cotton, growing watermelons, growing tomatoes. You could drive down the road and there would be little fruit and vegetable stands or a farmer with a pickup truck full of, you know, beautiful, in-season, you know, uh, uh, produce, the way we used to eat, in-season. And uh, so now that things are shipped in from who knows where, and how are they grown, uh, with what kinds of fertilizers, you know, what's in this food that we're eating, and what's in this food that we're feeding to our kids and our grandkids. Um, I just long for the days when I can go out and pick a big old sun, warm, ripe tomato and bite into it and let the juice run down my arms. And, you know, that speaks to uh, what Monsanto has done. You know, how do I find non-genetically modified food these days? You know, how do we source that? Uh, we're really trying to source regionally and seasonally, but it's hard to find even seeds. I want to get, you know, through the food, make people more aware of what, you know, what 
that's happening to our planet, what's happening to the food supply, the effect it's going to have on the generations to come. It is our responsibility to look for uh, the well-being of the next seven generations. So as an elder and old corn mom, you know, I'm trying to really uh, pass that knowledge on and see that it, that it happens in a positive way.